Settle back, get yourself something to drink, because we're showing you how to make damn fine carnitas, and then how to turn those into a Hawaiian pizza. Thanks to National Pork Board for sponsoring this video. And I have to say, the videos they've been sponsoring have been fabulous ones. Today, no exception. Carnitas, one of the greatest gifts the Mexican food world has put in front of us on a plate or in enchiladas, or in a taco, or just to eat late night standing in front of the fridge with the glow of the light bulb, like this out of a container. Best thing ever. But wait, don't stop there because we're gonna make those amazing carnitas and then we're gonna substitute the traditional ham on Hawaiian pizza with our carnitas and make a really good Hawaiian pizza 2.0. Hell yeah. <laughs> I was wondering how long it would take him to respond. Uh, all right, so our carnitas today will be made in a slow. You realize this has been here the whole time? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> My earbuds. Slow cooker, could do it in a pressure cooker, could do it in a Dutch oven, in the oven. I think I'm covering all my bases here. What's the difference between a pressure and a slow cooker? Oh, slow cooker uses a very low level of heat, low temperature to cook things slowly over a long period of time to make them super tender. A pressure uses pressure, high pressure, in a vacuum environment, sort of, uh, to cook things quickly. These carnitas you could do in a pressure cooker in probably an hour. We're doing them in six hours on fast in the slow cooker. But slow cookers have two settings, low and high. You could do them faster or slower. Like if you go to work in the morning, throw everything in the slow cooker, set it for low, come back eight, nine hours later, the carnitas will be ready and delicious. But not unless you start making them. Please, can I start? Let's do it. Thank you, sir. Oh, sorry. Let's start by making a rub with the following ingredients. Cumin. Chili powder. Mexican oregano, kosher salt. Oh, I think I dropped more than I actually put in. And crushed ground black pepper. And we'll mix this up with our fingers. You know, I'm cooking and I'm fending off flies. And you know how much we hate the flies. The weather's gonna get better and we'll be fine. I All know, right. We're almost through to the other end of summer. Almost. Ready for the meat? That's what it looks like. That, my friends, is a pork shoulder, a.k.a. pork butt. And this one is boneless. You want about four pounds for this recipe. So I will combine this piece here that's about two and a half pounds with this that was a bone-in piece that I had earlier and didn't realize it was bone-in and had to cut these random pieces off. But it's okay, we're gonna be fine. You just want about four pounds of boneless pork shoulder, AKA pork butt. So let's just cut these into smaller pieces. They don't have to be this small, just like this. See that fly? Right on my hand, God. Look, you could throw this whole piece in all by itself and it would be fine. It would just take a little longer to cook. So now we have our pieces like this, no oil, no nothing. We just take our seasoning and on we go. Let's make sure everybody gets some nice coverage. Smells great already. When all these guys are covered, we just drop these right into our slow cooker. I think I used about a tablespoon or so of each. And when they're set, get the extra on the board, and then in they go. Perfect. Now the rest. Next up, like six or seven cloves of garlic that I've taken this skin off. I'll give a little smash and a quick rough chop too. Look, after six or eight hours, this is just gonna be melty, gorgeous garlic that will be tremendous in here. So in they go. And next, for a little spice, a serrano. 
hotter than a jalapeno. We're still gonna leave the seeds in for some delicious heat. Little cut. And then we'll just chop these guys, seeds and all. You're gonna be fine. And if you don't like heat, leave it out. There'll still be tons of flavor without the risk of you burning your tender little mouth. And while we're here, diced up white onion. And then our liquids, maxi boy. Juice of three limes. Yum. I'm already thinking, honestly, I'm already near salivating knowing how great this is going to be. And then the juice of three oranges. And I'll just put a little sieve. What's that thing called? A sieve? A sieve? A sieve? No, it's a, it's strainer? a strainer. I'll just put a strainer up there. What the f is a sieve? A sieve. What's a sieve? A sieve is that. Oh. So three of these. I mean, three oranges in. Oh, boy. It's a lot of work. Squeezing oranges. And that's it. Lid goes on, I'll take it inside, I'll give it a quick stir, I'll plug it in, and in uh, six-ish hours, it'll be ready. But we got your back, you won't have to wait that long. When I come back, we make a sauce. World's easiest little quick sauce for a pizza. We start with some olive oil, a couple big cloves of garlic. Ow, it's very hot, it's very hot, and one more. And yes, we don't want it to burn and get brown, so we'll give it a quick stir. And it's super fragrant right now. We'll add the only other ingredients. Ready? Some crushed fire roasted tomatoes. They bring with them their own little level of heat. Not a lot, but it'll be delicious. And we mix. Now this is just gonna simmer over the next, you know, half an hour and the tomatoes will start to break down some more. Okay, I lied a bit. We will give it a pinch of salt. But we want these guys to start to do their thing. And when this is ready, we'll get our dough and we will begin. We're ready to get the coals going. I'm a fan of a chimney. You put your charcoals in here, you put your briquettes in here, put a few pieces of paper underneath, you light it, and then when it's ready, you just dump this into your your grill, your barbecue, or in our case, the Kamado. This is a Caliber Pro Kamado. I love it. it. Does all kinds of things really, really well. But as I was saying, this was the chimney that you can see I've used for an awful long time. Uh, and they're really great. They're really great. But now I found this one. Take a look. So you can see my coals are in. Lump charcoals in there. If I show you like this, see it's all ready. But what's cool about this one is instead of dumping it out, it has a quick release right here that opens a flap and lets everything out the bottom. Please don't dump them on my feet. I will not, but I will dump them in the Kamado like this. Beautiful, huh? And this is gonna help us. So I'm just gonna add a few pieces to the top. We want some heat here. We're cooking a uh, carnitas Hawaiian pizza for God's sake. Let me bring these guys in. Come on, you. And now we'll put on our pizza stone, like that. Close the lid. And we wait. We're at 250, let's go, uh, we're at 550, 600, let's get it up there. But now we have to get our carnitas, make the pizza, then we come back. And here we are. Are we ready? We're ready. Carnitas, boom. Okay, well, I, I unplugged them a while ago and there was steam here once. But then Max took a long time to set up his cameras. Here's what's impressive though. Watch this. A little uh, wooden fork. Look at it. Oh my God. How does that happen? That happens from slow cooking with a little bit of liquid. And look, that's great. Okay, so let's take some out. Then we'll have a bite, we'll make a pizza, and then we're gonna be happy. Oh my gosh. This is the goal, folks, right here. This is everything we want. The back of the spoon test, ready? Squoosh, squoosh, squoosh. That is gonna make for some very, very, very delicious eating. Gotta tell ya. All right, a little bit more. Let's check it out. Just bust it up a bit. 
the smell from right here. And you can see bits of onion in here, little bits of serrano. Oh my, tiny bits of garlic. But look what I have, lads. You know what three forks means? Three bites? Everybody's getting a bite. Uno, dos, tres. Thank you. I can save the third one for myself. Go, oh, go ahead without me. Damn it. Son. Damn it, not kidding. We're happy. The Serrano brought like a really lovely amount of heat. Back of throat, little bit. I think a jalapeno would have been lost in here. Nobody could say this is too hot. One of the things that you would do, say if you were gonna make a taco, is you would take the carnitas, put it in a little, <laughs> carnitas, my accent, Canadian, it doesn't make any sense. You take the carnitas, put it in a pan that you'd heat it with a little oil. You would get it crispy on one side, give it a little flip over, let it finish a bit. That makes the gorgeous, uh, crispy carnitas that we all love to enjoy in a taco or burrito or whatever. But this, on a Benedict, insane. This, in a quesadilla, insane. This, inside of scrambled eggs for breakfast one morning, insane. But today, none of that. Today, Chance, what are we making? We're making a pizza. We're making a Hawaiian pizza. Let's go. This is the dough that I made earlier. We've made dough, you've seen it happen. This is the point after it's risen for about an hour. We do this, we punch it down, and we take it out. And my only question in my mind right now is should this be one pizza or two? We're gonna just, we'll make one with this. That's cool, right? Yeah. Okay, so here's how this is gonna go down. I need to spread this out a bit. So I'm gonna start it right on here with some flour and the ball of dough. Now this we want to spread out as nicely as we can. I know there's people with real pizza dough making skills. And along with that comes pizza dough shaping skills. And that is not me. So I just have to go with what works for me. And what works for me is taking my time, slowly pressing out towards the edges, and then stretching. I can't throw it, I can't toss it. I'm limited to this, but that's all right. The recipe for the dough that you make literally in about three, four minutes is on the website. If you don't wanna do that, you could buy your own dough at the supermarket. They sell balls of dough, one pound balls, ready to go. The only thing I'll tell you is that make sure you take them out of the fridge at least a half an hour before you wanna shape them because the glutens will be so tight, it'll just snap back like a spring and you won't get anywhere. Max has actually left the building. I'm over here working and he's not even paying attention to the video or anything. I'm that good, I don't need to. You're that dumb is what I'm saying. So we're just gonna stretch it out here. And look, if you're a dough person, you're a pizza maker, you, you, you throw pies for a living. I love that. I so appreciate that, but that's not me, so just get off my back. You'll see how great this will be when we're done, though. Okay, let me just stretch this, and I'm not going to talk anymore. And when your dough is stretched generally to where you want it, and that fly goes away, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my pizza peel, because I've got to go put it on that pizza stone. I just can't hand carry it. And to help it come off, I'm gonna put some cornmeal on here and it will act like little mini ball bearings and help slide it off beautifully. I'll take this, put it on here. That's the effect. That's what the cornmeal does. So I'll spread it out. Boys, now we bring the rest. And the rest consists of First, our fire roasted sauce that we made. If you like it not chunky, then feel free to put it in a blender or processor just to smooth it out for you. In a bullet, use a little hand, uh, what are those things, hand things called? Immersion blender? An immersion blender. Oh, Chance for the win. 
Okay, so don't overdo the sauce, right? It's not about cheap, it's about what you need. Hawaiian pizza, what's one of the big components? Pineapples, crushed canned pineapple, because... <laughs> what the f***, I can't get it open. Okay, now that you've got the pineapple open, now we could do a little bit. A little bit more, don't inundate. But think about where you're putting it because every bite should have some of everything. Two more things. One, the carnitas. Wow. Oh my God. Okay, so traditionally a Hawaiian pizza has a ham. This is gonna be a thousand times better. A thousand. And I used to be one of these people that said, fruit does not belong on a pizza. And I don't think there's any other fruit items that go on pizzas. But I used to not like this at all. And now the sweet combined with the savory of the carnitas makes me super happy. I think it's a really nice combination. Last but not least, a little shredded mozzarella. Or as they would say in The Sopranos, a little shredded mozzarella. Okay, and I just noticed sitting beside me is a pepper grinder, so let's just do a little fresh pepper on top because it'll be really good. And now this, still sliding, we we'll go to the Kamado. And we're ready. Remember, the bowl bearings. Hello, buddy. We'll see you on the other side. It's a crazy time in, in this country on this continent, in the entire world. And one of the things, one of the things that normalizes life a little bit is sitting down and having a great meal with people. And of course, that's why pork plays such an important role in all of us sitting down all over the world. Because pork is one of those things that can take you wherever you want to go, food-wise and memory-wise. We're making carnitas today because, well, I'm in San Diego and I'm 20 minutes from Mexico and we love to go down there and have the, the carnitas off the taco carts in the small restaurants. It's amazing. But think about how food can transport you. For example, sweet and sour pork puts you in Asia somewhere. A crispy pork schnitzel sandwich, you're right in the middle of Oktoberfest. A giant beer stein, sandwich in one hand, singing and having a great time. The delicious banh mi with Vietnamese and French influences coming together in one delicious sandwich. That's the thing, that's what food does. I tell people all the time, go to another country's supermarket, buy a few ingredients that will change the way you cook. And for us today, we're not just taking you quickly to Mexico with our carnitas, but we're making a hard right turn and going all the way over to Hawaii which technically a Hawaiian pizza didn't originate in Hawaii. It originated in Canada by a Greek restaurateur. The point remains, it's a Hawaiian pizza and it's fun and it gets you out of the everyday humdrum life. That's what food can do. That's what pork can do. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to www.pork.org slash real pork. And when you get there, tell them Sam the cooking guy sent you actually won't mean anything and I don't think you can do that but it'd be funny to try wouldn't it just go make some pork make it delicious and eat it you're gonna be very happy and there's our oh hi I've missed you ah look at it should we take her off and go have a bite hell yes come on pretty you're coming with us and we're in and down oh and gorgeous look at our friend here and last before we cut just a little cilantro because it's just it's perfect with it perfect too much there we go now we can cut let's go here oh get away fly and oh the crunch and now one beautiful little wedge the gorgeous everything and a crispy bottom oh yum and oh, the, i hear crunching Mm. 
I've had Hawaiian pizzas. But this, the carnitas is a game changer. I'm not kidding. And the little bit of crushed pineapple is the way to go. Too much, too much sweet will inundate. And you don't want that. You want a little sweet to complement the savory of the sauce that's fantastic, but really the carnitas. <clears throat> it's fantastic. Thanks to the National Pork Board for sponsoring this and today. Mm.